We want to look now at Mr. Biden's bid for the race for the nomination and how Democrats may respond with Democratic Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester of Delaware. She endorsed Joe Biden's candidacy today. And Amy Allison. She's president of She the People. It's a group that advocates for women of color in leadership positions. She is not supporting a specific Democratic candidate in the campaign. We welcome both of you to the news hour. Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, to you first. You're right out of the box saying you endorse Joe Biden for president. Why? Why is he the right person for 2020? Joe Biden is the right person for such a time as this. Um, I've known Joe for uh, 30 years as Delaware senator, uh, vice president, but also as a friend. And when I think about his taking this step, I think about the past, the present, and the future. First of all, just the past, the record of accomplishments that he brings to the table, the present, that we are living in a time, as his video showed earlier today, where incidents like Charlottesville are happening and where we are seeing just an abuse of power. And so he's focused on the present, but also because he cares about the future of this country. And so um, I'm excited. Uh, many of us, not just here in Delaware, but across the country, are excited about the campaign and feel that uh, Joe Biden is the person that needs to be our next president. Amy Allison, how do you look on Joe Biden's candidacy? Well, it's interesting to talk about past, present, and future. Uh, Joe Biden had the benefit of high name ID in his association with President Obama, which makes him beloved amongst uh, African-American voters, uh, particularly African-American women who are the highest vote turnout uh, Democrats and most, lo most loyal Democrats. But we really need to talk about uh, also the past association um, with uh, Anita Hill. And, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of questions about his relationship to not only black women, but uh, women of color in general, uh, associated with the how he handled the Anita Hill hearings back then, but also just a couple of weeks ago, how he handled uh, the accusations of improper behavior toward former Nevada legislator Lucy Flores. I think that's the present. And, uh, you know, I, I think the future is really going to depend on you've got, a, you've got a candidate with high name ID who's entering into a very different world. This is a Me Too era and a Black Lives Matter era. You know, how is he able to appeal to a broad range of very enthusiastic key Democratic voters in the places that he needs to in order to gain the momentum? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that question is still out. Well, let's take two of the, the things that you just mentioned. Uh, Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, what about uh, how he handled Anita Hill uh, in 1991, being a very tough questioner of her when she was raising questions about sexual harassment by Clarence Thomas, and what's happened in the last few weeks? I think for Joe Biden, you know, I had the opportunity to have a conversation about with him. I actually requested 15 minutes. Uh, I was granted a half an hour. But we stopped and talked for two and a half hours about a lot of issues because he believes as well that this is not a fait accompli, that this is something that he has to earn. As uh, was said by Amy, black women are the loyalist uh, Democratic voters. We are the active Democratic voters. And we have also said that we want a seat at the table. And so I think what people need to look at as we go into this next uh, couple of months is Two th a few things. Number one, his experience. What? Number two, what are his policies? And number three, who does he hire? Who does he bring around the table as well? One We're of gonna... the things that I can acknowledge for him is that, I just want to say this one well, last thing, is that what he does that is different than our current leader is that he acknowledges areas he needs to grow and he moves forward and tries to grow. That's something we're not seeing right now in our president. I want to come back to Anita Hill. The New York Times is reporting uh, today, this afternoon, that uh, Anita Hill is saying she did receive a call from Joe Biden. His campaign is saying he called to apologize. She's saying, and I'm quoting, she was deeply unsatisfied with what they talked about. Is that going to linger as an issue, Amy Allison? Yes, it will. Anita Hill was a young and very courageous law professor. When I was in college watching the way that she was treated for standing up and, and speaking out, um, he, did a, he, he allowed a lot of damage to happen in the decades since by having a cooling, a chilling effect on women, black women and um, women everywhere in the country who dared to have the courage to speak out against harassment that they received at work. 
I think there's uh, an accounting that needs to happen on the part of Joe Biden to directly ad address it. So it starts with a simple apology, but needs to have very important plans that go with it. I mean, it's good that his campaign called, but if Anita Hill's not satisfied, well, I'm telling you, for women of color, we're not satisfied either. Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, just quickly, what is it that you believe Joe Biden needs to do in order to help people come around to his explanation and his apology? He has acknowledged that if he could go back and do it differently, he would have. But he also made sure that there were women on that Judiciary Committee so that a person would not have to face an all-white male uh, Judiciary Committee. And I think the voters are going to really have to decide if the actions, because he has a long record, he has a long track record of many, many accomplishments, but there are also things that he has acknowledged he would do differently. And it's going to really be up to the voters to decide, and it's also going to be incumbent upon him. He wants to earn people's vote. He wants to do that. I just want to ask both of you, finally, in an era when there are younger candidates, female candidates, candidates of color, why is Joe Biden uh, the right choice here or not? I mean, how well, much should it matter that he's older, that he's white, and that he's a male? Uh, Amy Allison? That's a question we asked the eight presidential candidates as part of the She the People Forum yesterday. Uh, we had candidates like Warren, Warren, Elizabeth Warren, the senator walked into a lukewarm reception, and 20 minutes later, uh, standing ovation, she'd won over the hearts and minds of the thousands of people in that room. Uh, Bernie Sanders walked in to huge applause and left with a tepid uh, response. And I think uh, what we're going to find as, as Joe Biden enters the race, that he is uh, really uh, that we could see public opinion, we can see the opinion of the, these key Democrats, women of color, change as he goes into uh, these series of, of debates and public appearances. And, and we'll see, because uh, women of color are looking for strong advocates for gender, racial, and economic justice. And the question is, can Joe Biden earn his vote in a crowded, rich field of strong candidates? What about this question, Congresswoman Blunt Rochester? Well, I'm an example that representation does matter. And it is important that we have a seat at the table. I think what Joe Biden has demonstrated over the course of his career is whether it's on the issues of civil rights, whether it's on the issues of human rights or women's rights, he stood up. And also whether it's about strengthening our economy, he stood up. And so what I would ask the voters and what I would ask the American people is to stay open-minded to see his heart, see what kind of message he puts forward, and, and let him earn your vote. He's already earned mine. All right. We want to thank both of you, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester of Delaware and Amy Allison of She the People. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.